Welcome to Media Management and Final Cut Pro 10. My name is Steve Martin, and I'm here with my buddy, uh, Mark Spencer, and we're going to be looking at a very important subject, media management. Um, why is this such an important subject, Mark? Well, it's absolutely critical. You need to, you're bringing in media to Final Cut from a variety of devices, from cameras, from camera archives, from hard drives. You need to know what your choices are about where that media goes, and as you go forward, where that media lives so that you can, if you want to share the media with others, or you want to move it to another drive because you want to edit on the road, or you're in a network situation, you just need a solid understanding of how Final Cut Pro manages media. Yeah, and it, it is crucial. Not the most sexy subject in the world um, related to editing or motion graphics, but goodness, you really need to know where your media is with regard to, you know, like you said, sharing. Uh, when clips go offline, well, what happened? How could I fix it? Um, where is my media? Is it on a drive? Is it local? I, I don't know. And we're going to cover all of that in this tutorial. And in fact, what we want to do here is to um, not just get you grounded in the basics of how Final Cut Pro handles media management, but we're going to go through multiple real-world scenarios. For instance, when you want to archive your media, or you want to free up disk space, or uh, you're on a network with other users, how do you share? So this, this applies if you're an individual editor working by yourself, or you're sharing uh, projects with editors in another part of the world, or in your work group situation. We'll go through each of those scenarios uh, in some detail. So this will probably be one of the most practical tutorials you could ever watch. I hope so, yeah. So we're gonna just go ahead and jump right in and get started. Great, let's go. So Mark and I are gonna start with a series of keynote slides that'll help visually cement this uh, for you. And it's important to, to kind of see visuals to see what's actually happening with your library. We're calling this section the library model. So we need to start with what is a library and how is it set up? What's the hierarchy of library? Because it will come into play when you start managing media later. Okay, so what is a library? A library is essentially a suitcase, what we call a self-contained production unit. Libraries can be completely, and they are completely, independent of one another. And libraries store events, and events are simply like folders for organizing your content, and within those events are media and projects. Exactly, basic hierarchy, events in libraries and media and projects within the events. Okay, now, in terms of how you might think about organizing, what's the logic? Well, we call them self-contained production units because, for example, you might set up a library for a specific type of project. Maybe it's an event, maybe it's a television show, maybe it's a film. So we, we relate the libraries to the types of productions you're going to be editing with them. Under events, we call them workspaces, and you'll see why in a moment, but it's how you, the logic of how you uh, set up your import in terms of media. Because you obviously you can have multiple events within a single library. Right, multiple events. And the last section would be your timelines, your work, your story, the, the story you're trying to tell. Well, now let's look at a couple of specific examples. Let's say you're shooting a short or a feature film. So you might have one library for your movie or two libraries. Maybe it's two separate movies or... Or a library for every movie that you're doing. If you're doing a short, you could, a library could hold the entire movie. Right, and then in terms of workspaces, so the movie, your master container, your self-contained production unit would store all of your dailies. So each event would be that day's shooting could all be put into one event, would be one option for how to organize. Exactly, just one option. But this seems logical. If you're, you're shooting a movie, your dailies would go in separate events. Mm -hmm. Then those separate events would contain individual shots for those dailies, maybe a string out, a uh, rough cut, whatever you want to call it, first assembly that would all be related to um, those specific events. Yep. Okay, let's look at another example. Maybe you're doing an episodic television show, and of course we know that uh, episodic TV, everything's in seasons. Yeah. You know, uh, there's a, just so many seasons, and then each season's broken down by episodes. So here the logic is, each episode for each season would be its own event, and within that episode would be individual clips related to that episode, assembly, first cut, et cetera. Yeah, so here you could have a huge library that's the entire season, or you could decide to have a library just be one episode. But in this example, we've got a library for the entire season, and each event in it represents an episode of that season. Exactly. Here's one last example. Uh, a lot of you out there are customers, uh, do a lot of event videography. Maybe you're a wedding shooter, maybe you shoot bar mitzvahs or live events, sporting events, uh, musical concerts, what have you. Uh, here's just one way to think about it. The event itself, all the media related to that would be in one master library. In this case, a wedding. And inside there would be broken down into uh, substructures of that event. In this case, preparation, ceremony, reception. And within those individual events would be the individual, of course, clips, the rough cut, and the versions. 
And it's really up to you how to organize your own work. But these are some examples to get you thinking about how you might want to set up your libraries. Right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to jump into Final Cut Pro and look at an actual library and how I might set it up for my own project. So now we're in Final Cut Pro. And here we have a single library, you can see it here, called Discover Diving. And I like to do a lot of diving, Mark, and I travel around the world, and I want to do, essentially do a film project that would highlight different places around the world that are just awesome hotspots for diving. Okay, so you've set up your film project as a single library. As a single library. Okay. And then what I did was I created individual events within that library, as you can see here, uh, related to the various locations. For each location, one right. event per location. Right, okay. so here, this is a library called Kelp Beds of California, and if I skim through it, you can well, this see... This is an event. It's an event, okay. right. So this is all clip content related to that event. The Kelp Beds of California. The Kelp Beds okay. of California. So when this event contains the clips, but it also contains, I can see up top, it contains projects. projects. And we said earlier that events contain two things. They contain clips and they contain projects. So here I double clicked on this project called Catalina and you can see it's a string out of some of those clips. Okay, right. so this that project contains clips from this event. Right. And as we'll see later, your project contains clips from other events or even other libraries. It really doesn't matter, but generally the idea is that the project contains the clips from that event. Organizationally, you want to sort of set it up that way. That's right. In fact, here's another event that, again, I separated it to create well, clips of just the reefs of Caribbean. So I kept okay. them separate. It's again, it's my logic. It may yeah. not be your logic, but it made sense to me to, to, to sequester these clips based on location. Yep. Right, so here, uh, skim through it. These are all clips related to the Caribbean dive location. And then I have, and you have a project, my project. Yeah. You can see this is a string out of some of those clips. Okay. okay, and you're free to have, you can have an event that has nothing but projects in it, you know, you if could. you wanted to, or an event that just has nothing but media. It's really flexible, but this is, you're setting up as a starting point to have related material altogether. Right. The other thing I want to point out to the audience is that libraries are really just a database. The real-time database, everything you do to them is recorded in this tiny file within, within the library itself. So the library's tracking what the media is that's in there and all your edit decisions as well on your project. That's right, it tracks okay. everything. So I'm gonna create a new event in the library. Right click, new event, option N, and I'll get the uh, new event window. Now I'm gonna create an event related to a new location uh, of diving. All right, so you went somewhere else diving and you've got a bunch of footage and you wanna bring it all into this specific event. Correct, so I'm gonna type out Rex of Cayman. Cayman Island's a great place to go diving. And in a previous version of Final Cut, it would automatically create an empty project for you. In when this, you create the event, it would add a project. Right, and now you actually have to check the box if, if, you, you, want. if you want a new project. That's right. Okay, because sometimes you may not necessarily want a new project to go along with the clips, but frequently you do. You bring in clips, you want to actually edit them. That's right. Okay. So I'm not going to create a project. I'm going to leave it to the default. I'm just going to press return, create the event. Okay, right. and the event gets created right in that library. Right, so now I'm ready to start importing media directly into that event. Got it. And that event just got recorded into the library database. Got it.